Most people get a new dog in one of three ways. From a rescue group, from a shelter or a pound, or from a breeder. Maybe you know someone whose dog just had a litter of puppies. Maybe you saw a puppy ad in the newspaper or on the internet. Or you fell in love with a puppy you saw in a pet shop window. Before you think of getting that puppy, make sure you know where it comes from. Don't unintentionally support puppy meals or inhumane breeding facilities. If you adopt your dog from a shelter or rescue organization, try to get as much information as possible about the puppy's parents. Make sure the puppy has had a complete veterinary checkup and get all records that exist on any procedures or vaccines he has been given. Infectious diseases run rampant in puppy mills, but not among puppies coming from respectable breeders or good rescue groups and shelters. All puppies' journeys began with the miracle of birth and lessons taught by the first and best instructor, their mothers. You can learn a lot about raising a perfect puppy by understanding how a mommy dog supervises and interacts with her babies. During a puppy's first two weeks, it knows three things, its mother's scent, touch, and calm assertive energy. Mothers are also fiercely protective and set explicit boundaries for other members of the pack. Look at that, see? And that is not aggression. She's not saying, go away with sound. She is pretty much with energy body language. See it? Energy body language. Letting everybody know that they're not ready to be visited by the pack. Look at that. She sets rules, boundaries, and limitations gently but firmly from the first day on Earth. A puppy should stay with his mother and litter mates until at least eight weeks of age. Much of a puppy's healthy development takes place with lessons learned from their mother and litter mates. Your primary job as a pack leader is to continue this education using the same natural common sense and calm assertive energy. No matter what breed of dog you're looking for, the most important thing to remember is to base your decision on energy, the energy of you and your family, and how compatible that energy is with the energy of the puppy you want to adopt. It's very important that we share calm, assertive energy from right now. You know, uh, I know a lot of people, first choice is to be, oh my God. Right. right. Oh my puppy friend, I love you. So that's excitement. And, and so in mother nature, excitement is not part of balance, right? This is how they're born, all of them. And so it, it's gonna depend on the, uh, Definitely the, the mom, you know, how, what state of mind she's in, and the environment and the people around them. How cute, that one's really cute. That is a precious baby. Before going to visit puppies in a shelter, be aware of your energy. If you feel sorry for the pups, they will feel the weak energy from you. You are going there 
to find the perfect puppy for you. So walk in there with your best calm assertive energy. Every dog is born with a certain energy level. Understanding how to read a puppy's energy level is critical to helping you pick the right one for you and your family. There are four energy levels. Very high, a puppy that is always, always on the move. <laughs> high, a very athletic energy. So he didn't do it, sit. Nice. Okay, get it, go Medium, which is mellow yet active. Come on, go on. <laughs> ah, you made it, daddy. And low, your basic couch potato dog. I always recommend that people choose dogs with the same energy level as themselves. Whoa. Or to get a dog with a lower energy level. Also, it's important to choose a dog that has a lower energy level than any of the dogs that are already in your pack. If you decide to get a puppy with higher energy, you will need to provide more exercises and activities to help drain the puppy's energy. In a moment, I will show you how I chose the four puppies in this video. But before that, let's talk a little bit about breeds. <laughs> it is important to understand your dog's breed background so you can fulfill the needs of the breed. Working breeds like Rottweilers, Doberman Pinchers, and German Shepherds can be fulfilled by performing a job. Even if that job is carrying a backpack on your walk. Scent hounds like beagles, bloodhounds, and basset hounds benefit from games like search and rescue, which allows them to locate a person or an object by scent. Some breeds like Labrador Retrievers Portuguese water dogs and their standard poodle were bred to work in the water. So they enjoy activities like swimming, duck diving, and fishing items from the water. Find activities that complement the breed of your dog. But remember, breed doesn't dictate a dog's energy level or temperament. Make sure you can fulfill the needs of the breed that you bring home, or you will live with the consequences of a dog whose needs are unfulfilled. Okay. Okay. Some breeds require special help and grooming attention. Learn the needs of your breed before you embark on your journey with your new puppy. Let's review. Number one. Do proper research on the shelter, rescue organization, or breeder where you intend to get your dog. Two, energy. Both yours and your dog's plays a vital part in selecting a dog that is a perfect match for you. Three, breed doesn't dictate a dog's energy level. Four, research any special needs health requirements, or other challenges for the breed you choose.